Hi, friends. I'm Pastor Jack Keating from Emmanuel United Methodist Church here in Camillus, and we want to welcome you to worship on this day. Today we're going to celebrate the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. And our gospel reading is going to take us into the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And there we are going to hear about a Canaanite woman who shows us all how to love and to be a really godly mother. In fact, my message for today is entitled, How to Get Into the Mom's Hall of Fame. We hope you're going to like that message. During this worship time, you're going to hear a great children's moment from Ashley, some wonderful special music, and we'll hear some music that we can all sing along at home to. So I'm going to ask Dan and Lisa now to begin our worship time with some songs that we can lift our voices to wherever we are right now. Let's sing together. We gather to worship God, to share prayers and gifts, to pledge ourselves to God's work in the world. Let us join together in prayer. Gracious and holy God, we come to you because you have first come to us. We know you because you have revealed yourself. Give us in this morning hour of worship a new sense of your spirit breathing through us. Lift our hearts with the wings of song. Heal our souls with the balm of prayer. Enliven our minds with the words of scripture and interpretation. And newly enable us to dedicate our strength, our substance, and our service to your work in the world. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to invite you to join your heart with mine as we pause for a moment to confess our sins before God. Let's pray. 
Oh God, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. We confess that we often fail to love with all that we have and all that we are. Often because we do not even truly understand what loving means. Or because we are afraid of risking ourselves. We cut ourselves off from each other. And instead we build barriers of division. Oh God, we confess to you this day by silence and ill-considered words that we have built up walls of prejudice. We confess that by selfishness and by lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity. We have had left precious little time for others. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness. For sometimes we are very deaf. Come and fill this moment now and free us from our sin. Lord, hear our prayers. If we confess, God is faithful and just. And God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verses 1 through 2a and verses 29 through 32. Listen to what Paul says. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. Don't you know what scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel? For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And this is the faith of a Canaanite woman. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week, we're going to talk about hymnals. Have you ever heard of Fanny J. Crosby? Fanny was a hymn writer and a poet who wrote over 8,000 hymns. Um, if you look through some hymnals, um, there are 17 hymns in hymnals written by Fanny J. Crosby, depending on which hymnal you use. A very short list of the most popular hymns written by Fanny would include great hymns, 
as to be to God be thy glory or I am thine O Lord or tell me the story of Jesus and uh, all the way my Savior leads me but you may be surprised to learn that Fanny was totally blind she lost her sight when she was six weeks old uh, through the negligence of a doctor who was treating her uh, who was treating inflammation in her eyes because she was blind I'm sure that many times Fanny heard the words, you can't do this, or you can't do that. One reason I feel sure she heard those words is because she once wrote a song entitled, Never Give Up. The words of the refrain of that song go like this. Never give up, never give up, never give up to thy sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Fanny never gave up. Blindness, she wrote, cannot keep the sunlight of hope from the trusting soul. Fanny had great faith in God and put her trust in him to get her through her obstacles she faces in life. She never gave up. Our Bible lesson today tells of another woman who had great faith and refused to give up. The Bible doesn't tell us her name, simply calls her a Canaanite woman. It means that she was a Gentile, and as you know, Jesus and his disciples were Jews. The Jews would have very little to do with the Gentiles. The Canaanite woman met Jesus one day while he was traveling in the region of Tyre and Sidon. She came towards him, crying out, Have mercy on me, for my daughter is possessed by an evil spirit. Jesus did not reply to the woman, and his disciples came to him complaining that she was bothering them and asked him to tell her to leave. And Jesus said to the woman, I was sent to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus replied, It isn't right to take food from children and throw it to dogs. And the woman answered, That's true. But even dogs are allowed to eat scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. What if she had given up? What if her faith had not been so strong? The end of the story would have been quite different, wouldn't it? Let us all follow the example set by Fanny Crosby and the Canaanite woman. Let's keep the faith and never give up. Let's pray. Father, we place our faith and trust in you. When we face obstacles and trials in our daily life, help us to keep our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Oh God, you who are the rock and the redeemer, bless the words that come from my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they may be pleasing to you. Amen. I read that some years ago, on a very hot summer day in South Florida, a little boy decided to go for a swim in the old swimming hole out behind his house. In a hurry to dive into that cool water, he ran out the back door of the house, leaving behind his shoes and his socks and his shirt as he went. He flew into the water, not realizing that as he swam towards the middle of that little watering hole, an alligator was swimming toward the shore. His mother in the house was looking out the window and saw both of these two getting closer and closer together. In utter fear, she ran towards the water, yelling as loudly as he could to her son. Hearing her voice, the little boy became alarmed and made a U-turn to swim back to her, but it was he was just too late. Just as the little boy reached his mother, the alligator reached him. And from the dock, the mother grabbed the little boy by the arms, just as the alligator grabbed him by the legs. There began an incredible tug of war between the two. The alligator was much stronger than the mom, but the mom was much too passionate to let go. A farmer happened to drive by and heard her screams, 
and raced from his truck and grabbing his gun, he took careful aim and shot the alligator. Remarkably, after many weeks in the hospital, the little boy survived. His legs were extremely scarred from that vicious attack of the animal and a newspaper reporter went to interview him about his trauma and asked if the little boy would show him his scars. The boy lifted his pants legs. And then with obvious pride, he said to the reporter, but, but look at my arms. I have great scars on my arms too. And I have them because my mom wouldn't let go. And on his arms were the scars of the deep scratches where his mother's fingernails had dug into his flesh in her effort to hang on to the son she so desperately loved. You know, we might have scars on our bodies from a battle or some other event that showed us that Jesus Christ would not let go of us. And we know that as Christians, Jesus never lets us go. And by the evidence of this, there are marks, not on our bodies, but on his. Today, we're going to look at a mother's passion to save her daughter and her faith in Jesus. We will look at the story as a whole for a bit, and then I want to talk a little bit about that mother in particular. This story is about a woman who has no name. She was a Gentile. She lived in an area that was generally hostile to the Jews. But what we know about her was that her faith was great. And here we are some 2,000 years later, still reading about her. If you look back over the previous chapter and a half or so of the Gospel of Matthew, you will find that Jesus has been ministering in an area around the Sea of Galilee. There he had fed the 5,000. He had walked on water and called Peter to come out and walk to him. And they ended up, Jesus and his disciples did, in a place called Genesaret, on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. And there they meet up with a delegation of Pharisees and scribes from Jerusalem who came to test him. But you know, Jesus really needed a break. He needed time alone with his disciples to instruct them, and so they headed to an area outside, we're told, of the Jewish territory, around the coastal cities of Tyre and Sidon, which are about 35 and 60 miles, respectively, to the northwest of Galilee. This is the only time in the Gospel accounts that Jesus actually leaves Jewish territory. Now, they weren't running away. They needed time alone. The parallel account in Mark 7 suggests that Jesus didn't want anybody to know where they were. Any self-respecting Pharisee or scribe, you see, would never follow Jesus there. Tyre and Sidon, while well, they were just considered the Mecca of Gentile sinfulness. Jesus even commented on that when he was rebuking those cities in Galilee. But Jesus needed a break. You know, I think many of us are just waiting for the country to fully open up again after this coronavirus pandemic. Because as soon as it does, we're heading out on vacation. But do you leave your Christianity behind on vacation? Do you leave your worship behind? This Canaanite woman comes to Jesus. The Canaanites are a race that is marked for extinction by God due to their sinfulness, their immorality. That's what the Jews believed. And as a woman, she was a second-class citizen in that culture, but she comes pleading to Jesus. Her daughter had something dreadfully wrong with her. It might have been a demon possession. It might have been a physical ailment. We don't know. But we do know that this mom was incredibly desperate. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Well, you know, that messianic title was used pretty exclusively by the Jews. It was not used by the Gentiles in that day. 
But yet she used that title and she had this long discussion with Jesus about saving her daughter. And despite all that she has gone through and all that that discussion had, it appears to me that this mom should be included somewhere in the Mother's Hall of Fame. Maybe there'll be a wing in her honor, except it would be a wing without a name. Because I can see a whole bunch of reasons why she should be in that Hall of Fame because of the godly mother that she was. First of all, she didn't need a name. She's a poor woman. She is humble. She's not looking for recognition. She's an outcast. She's a Canaanite Gentile. And so we, we don't get her name in the story. But yet, we talk about her as being one of the greats in Scripture. And we read about her now some 2,000 years later. This godly mother is empowered by love. Her love was even more powerful than her fear. Her love was even more powerful than her shame at who she was. Her love is more powerful than all her hardship and her sacrifice combined. She would not leave anything undone to get help for her daughter. This godly mother overcomes all barriers before her. She overcomes the, the barrier of inferiority because she was a woman. She overcomes the, the barrier of anonymity she is a Gentile speaking to a Jew. She climbed the mountain of diversity. She's one of the Canaanites. She's a natural enemy of the Jews. But this godly mother is armed friends with determination. She conquered the test of patience in Jesus' divine silence when he didn't answer. She conquered the test of doubt and discouragement when the disciples told her to go away. She conquered the test of rejection, the test of humbleness, because she recognized that she was an inferior person. But this godly mother also knows the power of prayer. And so she acknowledged the lordship of Jesus in worship. She knew from whom she could get the answer to her greatest need because she knew that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. And she admits that she can't manage her life without God's help. She confesses that she needs God personally. This godly mother triumphs because of her faith. She received a great commendation when Jesus said to her, you have great faith. She received great approval when Jesus said to her, your request is granted. And she received a great miracle when she got home and found that her daughter had been healed. This unnamed woman, forever honored in the pages of our scriptures, leaned on Jesus in her time of need. She loved her daughter and she went to the source of healing. What I'm wondering for us is, do we know that source of healing too? Do we desperately seek out the only one who can save us without a thought for what plan B might be? The fact is, friends, Jesus is the answer for all of us. Because Jesus is not a way. He is the only way. The only truth. And the only life. I pray that you're living your life that way as well. And that's my prayer for you today and every day. Amen. Peace be.
you join your hearts with mine as we gather now for a time of prayer. Almighty God, we pray for ourselves. We pray for our friends and families. We pray for our communities. We pray for our country. We pray that the rhetoric of division that surrounds us, that beckons to us, that would ensnare our heads and hearts in its vicious tendrils will not claim us. But we feel it, God. We really feel it. This political season threatens to gash the connective tissue that binds us together. We are angry with and suspicious of each other. Deep down, we are afraid. In the face of all the yelling and sniping and sneering, we appeal to you, O oh God, who can calm the storm, asking for strength and grace and courage. Call to our hearts, beckon to our better selves, hold healthy alternatives before us. Every day, send your spirit of love and justice and peace to us. Every day. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are worried and tired. We pray that your healing powers would descend on those who struggle like cool rain. We pray that your strength would fill people's wounded spirits and lift them like eagles on the wing. Please, O oh Holy One, stand alongside those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Surround them with friendship and deep compassion. Be as real to us as a big old oak tree, a tree that holds a body easily when you lean against it. We pray for our schools, for teachers, principals, school nurses, students, and parents. These people are working tire tirelessly and frenetically, figuring out how to make school happen in safe, <clears throat> supportive, and creative ways. Guide and sustain those planning for school. Grant us patience. Pinch out the fuse on our tempers. Do not let our rage get the better of us. This is an imperfect time, God. It is a messy time. It is a chaotic time. Help us to see beyond our long list of frustrations to you. Give us comfort in the beauty of the world. Give us perspective in the grace of the arts. Give us joy in the gift of dear friends. Give us glimpses of you. And in spotting you, help us to clear, find clear wisdom and hope for the living of these days. All this we pray, mingling our voices with the voice of Jesus, who prayed with steady trust, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, let me give you some reminders about the ongoing ministry taking place here at Emmanuel. We gather each Monday morning at 10 o'clock via Zoom for a time of coffee, chat, and fellowship. It's a great time. You, you bring your own coffee, your own snack, and gather around your computer. And uh, we are linked together via Zoom and can spend some time in fellowship and uh, enjoying one another's company. And all you need to do is send me an email to Pastor Jack K at gmail.com and I'll be glad to send you back an email with the Zoom invitation uh, included right in it. And then you can click on that uh, link and be a part of our Zoom gathering. We're also reading a book together this month. The book is called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. 
and we will resume our study on Monday evening at 7 o'clock and then repeat that class on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. So whatever time works for you, Monday night or Wednesday morning, again, just send me an email to that same email address, and I'll be glad to send you back a Zoom link so that you can join our book study as we read this great book together. Don't forget that the deadline for the September and October newsletter is coming up here on Thursday, the 20th of August. We need all your articles into the church office so that we can uh, put that newsletter together and get it out on the streets and into your inbox uh, before the 1st of September. We want to thank you for all of the gifts that you give that allow Emmanuel to continue to do the ministry that we do. As a matter of fact, we've come up with a way to make it even easier for you to do that. On the front page of our church website, there'll be two spots that say Donate. If you click on either one of those, you will open up a window with very easy to follow instructions that will allow you to make a gift to the support of the ministry here at Emmanuel right from your own home or your own office computer. And uh, we're thankful for all of those gifts. This new donate button is very easy to use and uh, we hope that you'll try it out if you haven't yet. It uh, might give you an alternative uh, to bring your gifts before God. And we wanna thank you again for all of those gifts that allow us to do the ministry we do here at Emmanuel and indeed around the world. Friends, now receive this blessing today. Go in peace. May God be merciful and bless you. May God look upon you with kindness. May God so work in your lives that the world around you will see Jesus Christ in you and render praise to God's name because of what you do. <laughs>